God is happy with you. God is happy with you. The Lord says you should not fear. He says you should not worry. He says you should trust him. Jesus says all shall be. Believe it. Don't be afraid of anything. Don't worry for anything. Just trust the Lord. The Lord says you should not fear. He says you should not worry. He says you should trust him. Jesus says all shall be well. Hallelujah. Jesus. Believe Jesus. Oh yeah. Tell him thank you, Father. Tell him thank you, Lord Jesus. Tell him thank you, Holy Ghost. And believe all shall be well. Amen. Amen. Tell Jesus. Oh yeah, and be all shall be well. Tell him, thank you, Father. Tell him, thank you, Lord Jesus. Tell him, thank you, Holy Ghost. And believe all shall be well. Thank you, thank you. I believe all shall be well. I believe all shall be well. We believe all shall be well. I believe all shall be well. Thank you. Be like Apostle Paul in dedication and service to God. Be like Apostle Paul in dedication and service to God. In Romans chapter 12, I read verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Apostle Paul in scripture was an example of a man that dedicated his life to, to God and to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will look into the scripture to point out key features for our inspiration in dedication and service to the living God. Seeing the life of Paul Yes, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, verse 16, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Apostle Paul said, when I received the call of God to serve the Lord, to preach Jesus, I accepted it willingly and happily yielded myself to God without seeking human approval or permission. I never went to tell somebody 
that permit me. God has called me to serve him. Permit me. God has asked me to preach him. I never took permission from anybody. God made me alone. He called me alone. It was my time. You didn't come. Maybe it is not your time. You didn't hear his voice. Maybe it is not your time. But it is mine. Or else you are not interested in him. I am. I am interested in him. Therefore, it is my turn. <laughs> it is my turn. That's why when I heard his voice, I say, Here am I. Brother, sister, it is your turn. I say, It is your turn. You don't need the permission of a father. You don't need the permission of a mother. You don't need the permission of a husband. You don't need the permission of a wife. You don't need the permission of a child. You don't need the permission of a, of a friend. Neither the permission of the government to respond to the call of God unto righteousness. It is your time. The Lord has called your name. Your name has come up. Jump up and serve the Lord. Don't take permission from father. Don't take permission from mother. Don't take permission from, from anybody. God has called you. It is your time. The time to die will also follow. And none of them can stop it. Can anybody stop it? Then why are they stopping your time to be served? Why are they stopping your time to serve God? It's your father, but can he stop the time you are to die? It's your mother, can she, can she stop the time you are to die? If they cannot stop it, why are they trying to stop your time to serve Jesus? Paul said, when it pleased God, who formed me from the womb to call me to come and serve him, to come and preach him, I didn't take permission. I'm not asking you to go and tell your father, Father, permit me to serve God. I have not asked you to go and do that. You are serving God. Father like, father doesn't like, mother like, mother doesn't like, whoever like, Satan like, 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 like. You are serving God. <laughs> it's your time. Whether your pastor likes it or not, what are you going to do? You will serve the Lord. Because it's your time. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. When the evil days have not come. This is the time. In the book of Luke. Chapter 9. Verse 59 to 62. Luke. Chapter 9. Verse 59 to 62, the Bible tells us. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Is your father born again? If he's born again, God will raise up other born again. To take care of him. If your father is your father born again, if he's not born again, go will raise up other people. You think that the father of this man died? No. He said, My father is old. <laughs> Let him die first. Allow me. To, my father is already old. Let him die. When he dies, I will bury him. Then I will be free. Don't add one day to the call of God in your life. Many will say, Until I finish school. The, but the man is the one sponsoring me. I'm not talking about that because he cannot sponsor you from not going to hell. The God who wants to show you everlasting mercy has called you. The sponsorship of that man has ended. In fact, the school that you are going in, into now, if you don't have sponsorship, stop it. God has called you. 
you are not going to act another time what was his answer he said Jesus said unto him lay the dead bury the dead but go down and preach the kingdom of God that is why I created you don't give an excuse this is your assignment that's why I brought you to this world your father has no right more than I over your life Tell your father, I have need of you. There is an ass tie. Loose them ass at the call and bring to me. If the owner asks you, what should you say? The master of the universe, above all beings, has need of it. Tell your father. Tell your mother. Tell your relations. Tell your husband. Your father, the master, has need of you simple. Don't allow this fire to quench because you fear man. The Lord says, I should tell you. He said, you should not worry. You should not fear. Don't fear. Go and live this Christian life. Make sure we're seeing you December International General Conference. Yeah. Amen. Start praying for transport money. Start believing God for transport money. Start saving your transport money. Who knows whether by the time you come, this camp has become double. That the praying that God should be doing miracle here. Amen. Paul labored hard to know Jesus and to obtain favor of Jesus to have his righteousness and to get perfected for heaven Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7 Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7 to verse 16. Yes. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. You have been a star among the youths. You were a DJ. And people have known you in that community. DJ business has stopped today. Everybody tell him, DJ business has stopped today. Because of Christ. Although you're popular, you're, yes, they like you the way you do it. It looks natural. But it is against Jesus. And it is lost because of Jesus. Do you believe that? Do you accept that? Whatever you were doing on the street, saloon. And you know how to do saloon. Don't people here. Turn it to face the east. But now that you are in Christ, for anybody is in Christ, tell me who he is. Then what happened? Then what will happen? No more saloon business. You say, how will I eat? When you were in the womb, how were you eating? Before you came to establish it, when you were still small, how were you eating? And now, how are the birds in the air eating? The God of heaven said, you should not fear. He said, you should not worry. All shall be well with your life. Yeah. Elijah spoke to the widow of Zarephath. When he said, bake a little cake and bring to me. The woman said, I have the last flour. He said, don't worry. Bake and bring to me face afterward. Go and bake your own. For thus says the Lord, the, the flour shall not finish and the cruise of oil shall not waste until abundance shall come upon the earth. Go and stop those dirty business. You will see the abundance that will follow you. 
Give God time, a little time. Even the occultic people will advise that man. Do you remember that man's story? That is, the man in secret society advised him that, do you know holiness revival movement? So go and stay there and be patient. You will see your miracle. Stop this evil business and remain patient. The Lord will visit your life. You are a prostitute. That's how you lived. From one man to another, or you homosexual, you are giving your botox to human beings. But go and stop it now. Go and stop it now. You are a new creature. Jesus is with you. Now you belong to Jesus. Don't go and do that dirty life anymore. How will I eat? Don't think about that. The Lord says it shall be well with you. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well with him. It shall be well with her. The Lord is the one saying, if you will come to righteousness, things will change in your life. You are living under a curse. Yes. Paul, labor, he said. But what things were gained to me, thus I counted laws for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I might win Christ. This Christ that you think is cheap, this Jesus that you think is common, do you know how people struggle to see the president? Do you know? This is the creator of the president. The creator of all presidents. Even common me. Some of you have been struggling to see me. You cannot see. Ah, it's not easy to see, Pastor. Do you know that it is a great privilege that you are before Jesus? A wonderful privilege. The great creator. The great creator. Except the light that is in him is dimmed. You cannot see his face. It, in fact, he took the body of man to appear on earth. Otherwise, who can see him? Who can see God in his full glory? And you have the privilege. You must struggle everything. What you have known now, in fact, we brought you to Nazareth School. You did Nazareth 1. This program is Nazareth 1 of Jesus School. What is this program? So, welcome to Nazare, one of Jesus' school. <laughs> Hallelujah. More to know. More about Jesus. More about Jesus. Now, if you tell a child, he won't understand anyway, but tell a child, you are in Nazare, one. Child, do you know how many years you have to do? You will go to Nazare, two. Even up to Nazare, three. Then you go to primary one. You go to primary Then you go to start... GS1, GS2, GS3, then you go to SS1, SS2, SS3, then you now go for your university study. Uh, uh, what do we call it? Eh? Yes, you go to part one, part two, part three, part four. You know, we remember our own, your own is difficult for me to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then you go again for master's degree to go and do two years to obtain. Then you go for five years doctorate. Then you begin to write papers and prepare for, for associate professor. Then you become professor. Then you want to become more. You are reading more. When you tell that small child, will he understand? To him, he has come to school. Daddy, I'm in school. You are welcome. But there's Johnny in the school. You are welcome to Christianity. You are welcome to Jesus. There's a long way to go. That's where Paul said, I count all things but dumb that I might win Christ. I follow after him. I wanted to get the knowledge of the excellent Jesus. 
that knowledge itself as i get it is sweet and then he said something concerning the righteousness in verse 9 he said and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is true the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith many people who are thinking they're righteous now is by their judgment is i'm trying now this is what i'm doing i'm talking about the righteousness approved the righteousness required for you to walk with jesus it's not a small thing you have to labor that's what the songwriter says he said i'm climbing up the upward way new heights i'm gaining every day still climbing as i onward go still praying as i onward go lord lift me up and let me stop above the clouds in the higher table land of the knowledge of jesus of the righteousness of jesus where there will be light in my heart where love will flow freely in my heart you have journey to make in righteousness the journey of of god in righteousness now some of you just remain and say and think you're righteous already anger in your heart you say you're righteous malice in your heart you're righteous pride in your heart you say you're righteous lust in your heart covetousness lust and and all is in your heart you think you're righteous already no go beyond that i i want to go beyond the clouds where no mist is there there's no shadow but i am on top of the clouds yeah to see the table of brightness cloudless car of righteousness my heart peaceful righteous to everybody righteous before god humble gentle loving i need to come to the higher christianity that's the journey you have just begun struggle it that's what paul said I'm, we're taking it from him yes verse 10 he said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his day I want to know Jesus. Paul, have you not known him? But Jesus speaks to you. Jesus uses you to speak. But you preach about Jesus. Yes. In those days, when, when people finish from primary school, they are made teachers. But they don't understand what they are teaching anyway. We are talking about teachers that know what they teach. We are talking about understanding. Understanding understanding the water is dropping to the lower level after having filtered the upper level is not the filtered water it's water actually but it's dropping one by one that is understanding you gather much yes knowledge paul said that i might know him that's talking about the knowledge that is understanding dropping you are picking up scriptures are unveiling themselves to you gradually and every verse is having some ladder for you to climb up and it reaches the sky and above the sky every verse it is that as it drops you you have climbed wrong one it drop that's your you are growing in understanding you have many years to spend to understand one verse and yet you cannot know it fully because circumstances will change your understanding of that verse regularly do you see how it happened with the disciples ah now we know that you are the son of the living god you didn't know before when i called you didn't you say peter did not confess i confessed but i didn't have the full understanding even to the end now you are not speaking to us in proverb you are speaking plainly now we know you are the christ even the last time that jesus will leave them is the growth of understanding settle down for christianity settle down settle down and begin christianity don't think you have arrived having your own righteousness congratulating yourself when many people are ahead of you many are ahead of you what's congratulating you the queue 
you are in Lagos, the first man is in Abuja, you are still in Lagos and you are congratulating yourself. Which congratulations are you giving yourself? You are in a queue and the first man is already here and you are still there in that great distance. Your journey, the journey is far. That's what Paul is saying, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What made Jesus to resurrect? What made him? I want to know that. No means I want my body to conform to that body. And he said, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. I want to suffer like Jesus. I want to partake. A man had problem in his leg. And so, because the leg swore in the room, he was, doing like, he was hoping. Then he had a child of about three years, four years. And the child too. Because he saw the father hoping. So he too should hope. Let's know what the father is doing. So, Paul said, I want to be persecuted and die in persecution to know how the intelligent God, the wise God, the creator, the everlasting God will come to it and choose to die. Then there's nothing better than dying for the gospel. I want to die like that. That's the best death. The highest date. I want to confirm to that date. I want to register alone that I died as Jesus died for the gospel. That's much level. You have just started. Let him that think it he knows. Know that he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. You are struggling. God, make me like Pastor Rica. May I look up and say, Father, help me. Bring me up. I've not known you yet. As I, I, in fact, God, drop something more. God, I need. I was pleading. Go help now. Moses, with all the miracles he did in Egypt, with all the miracles of the wilderness, the crossing of the Red Sea, would still say, God, show me your glory. That's much. That is the Christianity of Paul. That is the Christianity you're welcome to. You're invited to holiness revival movement that we should search for God to know the depth of God. How much he can allow us to know in this world before we go over there. That's much. The fellowship of his suffering. Yes. Being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. The reason why I'm laboring I'm praising all the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bow. Lord, plant my feet on. Lord, lift me up. Let me stand. By faith on heaven table land. When love and joy and light above. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Therefore, be informed. Angels are still learning to know God. Although they have been with him for millions of years, which we cannot tell. They are still learning more to know him. In fact, when he became a human being on earth, they, they stared at him. They said, Whoa, this is God. They were all surprised. When we go to heaven, we shall enroll in the school of knowledge of divinity. And there was no graduation until eternity. There's so much. So don't commonize this Christianity you have been brought into. Don't think it is nothing. The greatest thing exists in the universe. 
The greatest person existing in the universe is Jesus. Yes. And Paul said, I'm doing this because I want to resurrect as he resurrected. I want to partake in the resurrection of the dead and enter eternity with Jesus. Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. There are things you, you, you see me and you rejoice. There are things God knows of me. Yes, of course he knows me perfectly. But I want my heart to grasp it. I want second third layer of understanding to get this thing I'm looking for it. I've not arrived there yet. With all this mystery you think you see me and all these writings and all this preaching and all these miracles that you see in me, there is a strive, a struggle, a test, and a, a hunger that is inside me wishing more to appear, to see it more, to see it more, to see God show me more. Yes. Blessed are they that hunger and test after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It is this way you have been growing. You feel hungry, you eat, you feel thirsty, you drink. You feel hungry again, you eat, you feel thirsty, you drink. You're growing up, you feel hungry again, you eat, you feel thirsty, you drink. And this is how you are growing. That is the same way you feel in Christ. You need him every moment. You need him every time. Provocations of circumstances will cause you to cry out. Show me your glory. Interfere. Help, O oh Lord. And when he helps you out, you give him a steer. What manner of a man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him you have much to know yeah not that i've already attained or we're already made perfect brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before i press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I labor to know him more. I struggle to make to know him more. I attend programs. I listen to preachers that are righteous. I read books. I want, can you tell me more about Jesus? Do you see the hunger between that woman and her betrothed in the book of the songs of solomon that is how it should be in our hearts toward jesus our love is our lover tell me where he is tell me where he is no that's the cry of that woman looking for her husband looking for her betrothed tell me where he is I love him. His face is like this. His teeth is like this. The hair of his head is like this. My beloved is better. Is the greatest among ten thousands. He's talking about his beloved. Our beloved is Jesus. We need him. We want to see him. We want to know him. We want to touch him. We want him to speak. His voice is sweet. His laughter makes us intoxicated with life. We love him. Tell me where I can find him. Yeah. Hallelujah. That is how he hungered after Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, wait unto 
Where to? We have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Think this way. Think this way. Otherwise you think you have known Jesus and will stop reading the Bible. You would think you have known Jesus and stop reading books, inspired Christian literature that God is helping us to write up for you. You will stop listening to messages because I have known Jesus. What, what is inside this message? Listen to that single message for one million times. You will not know all what is there. Because the knowledge of that message depends on the maturity of yourself. As you mature from one level to another, the understanding of that message changes until you finish all your growth in this life. Yes, Paul was laboring. Again, Paul saw himself indebted with the gospel. He saw himself as one that was invested with, as though soul, having the sole responsibility to preach the gospel to all men and turn them to the righteousness of Christ. He carried the burden upon himself. I am responsible. Others didn't know this. Others didn't know this. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, Romans, Chapter 1, verse 13 to 17. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was let hit at all, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. He said, I am a debtor. God took me to the school of knowledge. God took me to the school of understanding. God took me to the third heavens. And I beheld things that humanity has not known. I saw things that are unspeakable. We never know these things on earth. I am responsible. I am responsible to the wise, to the unwise, to the educated, and to the illiterate. I am responsible. I am a debtor. Everybody, in fact, I owe everybody something essential. The truth of this gospel. I owe everybody something essential for the eternal life. I want to come to you people. I want to bring people there to Jesus. I've got to other places. But I want to come there to you, to you, to, to you also. I am a debtor. I'm not ashamed to preach this gospel. Because the power of God is in this gospel. To save them that believe. It first came to us, the Jews. But it's meant for the Gentiles also. It's for the whole world. But it began among us. It started among us. What is it? The gospel of faith in Jesus. The just shall live by believing in Jesus. The righteousness of God, not your own righteousness. 
shall come over to you as you believe in Jesus. It comes from faith. As you grow in faith, it increases. It expands in its dimensions by faith. Many don't know this. I want to let them know. I was burdened with this gospel, this gospel truth. I said, what will I do for the world? How do I bring the world to Jesus? I said, okay. What I will do, since God has given me the knowledge of the gospel, the understanding of the gospel the doctrines of the gospel the message of the gospel and the wisdom of the words and of expression i'm going to preach message to be recorded in all the languages that are spoken on earth and send out these messages to their nations this thought came to me in 19 maybe in 19 okay in 2005, 2000, 2000 and what? 2002 or oh, all. Oh. I said, let me get, because I see people dying. With my understanding, no woman that puts on earring can make it to heaven. Forever! It has never ever opened to a woman with jewelry in her, in her body. All these bishops with ring and chain, their names are not in the book of life. You, you don't know this. That's why Paul said, I am a debtor. But to the wise and to the unwise. They don't know. It's uncleanness. And nothing unclean can enter there. For there shall in no wise enter there anything that is unclean. All these women that are pumping their hair, not one has entered there except she died in the hospital bed where they just gave her life to she just gave her life to Christ and had no opportunity to go and undo it. Then the righteous God will say she didn't have time to undo it because she just accepted me at a dying moment. Otherwise, no one. But I didn't know having churches. I didn't know even speaking in tongues in those churches. I didn't know have great congregation. I didn't know even miracles going on there. You don't go to heaven on the basis of signs and wonders. You don't go to heaven on the basis of baptism in the Holy Ghost and in speaking in tongues and walking miracles. You don't go to heaven on the basis of answered prayers. You go to heaven on the basis of holiness. For without holiness, tell me what it means. But how many churches know this? How many congregations know this? How many preachers know this? We are debtors. We are debtors. Even as I'm speaking now, you say, eh? How can that be true? Our bishop, big bishop, you say, we'll not go to heaven. Is he wearing chain? I'm asking, is he wearing chain? If you answer me, I will tell you. <laughs> that is the truth. Again, in the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 1, Romans, chapter 9, from, from verse 1 to verse 4. I say the truth in Christ, and I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a Christ from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning fl the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forevermore. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Paul said, I am telling the truth. My heart is pounding. I am in pain because of Israel. 
the, the, it was to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, God gave promise of the coming Messiah that their seed shall possess the earth. Now, the seed have come, has come. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The seed has come. And see them, they, they reject him. They, and they're still walking on another way. Look at it in chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to go for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. They rejected Jesus and are doing their own righteousness. They are still sacrificing animals. They are still observing the Sabbath day. They're still doing that, doing other things in the name, washing their feet, washing their mouth, washing their hands, which have no meaning. They just shall live by faith. But they don't know this. Jesus is around. For them to believe in Jesus, they are not aware. They are now following other things. Oh. That is what we do for these churches. They don't know Jesus. They're dancing, they're jumping up. People go there and jump. They tell stories. They laugh. The pastor does not know God. The members don't know God. They dress as devils. Nobody bothers. Satan is rejoicing with them. Satan worships with them. <sighs> what can we do? How can we serve them? We're making an effort. They're not interested. They are fighting us. They are announcing to their members never to listen to us. They should burn our books. They should burn our, our recorded messages, taped messages, DVDs, CDs. What do we do? We know doom is their portion. They call them, we are the founders of the church. We are members of the first church. In fact, when we started church, you have not been born. You have not been born. So, what do we do now? Paul was lamenting. He said, what do I do to my people? I wish I die. Oh, God, let me die. Instead of saying this, die. Go see if you die. What about other people? There are people to hear. Because of the pain. See them doing Christianity of no value. No value. No lie. Their pastors sacrifice their members. To gain more power they, they do lying miracles technically planned and you think it's of the holy ghost they use anointing oil polluted and to be anointing their people to dumping them the more jesus that was the burden of paul learn from him let it concern you that your village doesn't know righteousness. Nobody is there to teach them. Let it concern you that your relations don't know these things. They are busy serving as father boy. They are busy doing other things. They don't know these things. They are living in sin. They are married to two wives. Your sister is the third wife. And yet very, very zealous in church, Catholic church. Very, very busy in other things. But what do you do? Paul had much burden for his own people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, I'm talking about be like Paul in dedication and service to God. Verse 16, For though I preach the gospel, have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me yeah woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel if i don't preach pity me the blood of these people will be upon my hand they don't know the truth i know the truth 
I've been to where I had the truth and I understood the truth. But look at them here. Look at them. If I do not open my mouth and begin to fear that they will beat me. And begin to fear that eh, if you say so, the pastor will, will, will abuse me. The pastor will be angry at me. Woe is unto me. Woe, pity me. Because the blood of these people is upon me. I know the truth, but I cannot tell them. I'm fearing their pastor. And their pastor has no eternal life for them. He's a deceiver. The pastor doesn't even know this truth. He doesn't even know not that he knows that he's hiding. Some know and are hiding, but this one don't even know anything. And now look at the people. They are clapping hands for pastor. Yay! Pity me if I leave these people without pitching. If I don't spend my money on these people to go and get materials and pour among them, spread it among them, to go and do labor, labor, labor. I may even pick one of them and go with him to go and school him and bring him back to the society. That's Paul. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. You have learned so much here. You didn't know these things. You have seen them coming from scripture. We are reading them from the Bible. And then you say, huh? Then why are they not preaching it in my place? How will they preach in your place? How will they preach in your place? You say, ah, where is no water in our house? Your house is in the desert. How can water come to desert? Your church is in a place where the light of Christ is not there. How can they preach the truth? Understandest what thou readest? What's the question Philip asked the Ethiopian, you know? He said, how can I? Except some man should guide me. How do you think they will just come at the knowledge of truth? Where would they get it from? Is it not these witches and wizards that go to Bible school that is their pastor? That are their pastors? Will they have truth for them? You must do something. Woe is unto you. If you don't do something concerning that community, if you don't do something concerning that quarter, if you don't do something concerning that religious man, woe is unto you. Rise up and do something for him. Rest up and do something for them. Spain and be spent to get knowledge of truth unto them. To get knowledge of truth. Because of passion, a teacher is able to make a child, a child, uncontrollable child, to be so controlled enough that he can ride, he can speak, until the child has grown up enough to write letters, to read and understand and interpret. Why don't you do something to that foolish community to bring out people from there that can go to heaven, that can help others also go to heaven? This was the passion of Paul the Apostle. Paul, in short, he was righteous and holy. Serving God with conscience, free from guilt. And in short, he was an example to others to follow. To make men see no evil in him. So, they may reject this gospel. No, he, they should see no evil in him. And by so, believe the gospel. He labored in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 2, the Bible tells us in verse 10, yeah, it says, Ye are witnesses also, ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 24, 
Acts of Apostles chapter 24 verse 16 and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward me I exercise myself always to have a conscience void of offense toward God and towards me. That's what Paul said. Yes. Void of offense. Conscience. Void of offense. In Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 yes and verse 2 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us, for we have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Paul said, we do all to live a life without blame. No lie is in our mouth. No eyes full of adultery in our eyes. No corrupt speech in our tongue. No coarse relationship in our life. We do all so that we should serve as example of this gospel. Let others see us as an example. We do all to ensure nobody laughs at the gospel because we are unbecoming, we are unqualified. That's what we labor to make sure we are fitted for this gospel. Who has found fault in us? Who can point accusation finger upon our lives? Be thou an example of the believers. Live honestly among the Gentiles. Provide things honest before all men. That is his lifestyle that this grace we have found people will not reject it in our hands people will not reject it because they have seen us with fault one fault two fault three and truly it is fault truly is sin that's his lie he said i labor i struggle to save people but i bring myself under and control myself that I don't sin while doing this thing. Otherwise, I will labor for others and be cast away. Paul was careful in his life to ensure he was righteous. He that taught righteousness must be righteous. That's Paul. He exhorted people to be righteous. Choose people that will be righteous to be in leadership. That the gospel of Christ be not abused. Tell women to love their husband, to love their children. Servants, obey your master. That the gospel of Christ should be adorned. That people should respect this doctrine. People should honor Jesus by seeing your life. That is what Paul did. To bless this gospel. Yes. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 9. He said. Those things which ye have both learned. And received. And heard. And seen in me. Do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Everybody say. Amen. Amen. You watch me. Do what I do. Live the way I live. I make sure I am holy every day. I check my life. I pray for grace constantly. I pray for grace constantly. Paul. I watch myself. Check around me. 
Have I spoken anything that is unbecoming? Is there even an urge? Is there a provocation? God, give me the word to answer this provocation. That your gospel be not abused. That those who are around me will not see me telling lies. And disdain the gospel and say, even the highest apostle see him telling lies. See him growing anger in as if he is one of these area boys that want to kill somebody. So he checked himself. He lived righteous. He said, my conscience has not shown me that I did a bad thing. This is Christianity. This is the Christian ministry. That's what God has brought you to train you. And this is the spirit he wants to put in your life. That's the spirit he wants to put into your life. That as you go now, you will be like Paul the Apostle in Christian life and ministry. Amen. Amen. Paul was so burdened with the salvation of humanity that he preached. No. He, want, he wanted to be preaching every time to every man. So that he should not forget. He wanted those who have not seen him. Also, those who have not seen him. Also, to hear this gospel. He wanted those that were on bone to have this truth. Therefore, he put it into writing. He wrote. He wrote. In prison, he was busy. In fact, prison time was resting time. For Paul to write, he was writing to people. He wrote to churches. He wrote to individuals, encouraging them in the gospel. Encouraging them in the gospel. He was a writer. Look at it in First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians. Is it? Let, let's start from his epistle in Romans. Romans chapter 1 Paul wrote Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separate unto the gospel of God verse 7 to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He wrote to them all. Believers and unbelievers. I want you to go to heaven. I am a debtor. I have knowledge of eternal life. The world doesn't have it. The presidents of the world doesn't have, don't have it. But I have. I'm a debtor. I'm writing to all that are in Rome. In the government of Rome. I don't worship us in Rome. In the churches of Rome, believers in Rome, free thinkers that are in Rome, I am writing this unto you because I love you in Christ and I want you to know these things. First Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustains our brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, call to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. But theirs and ours, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I turn my God always on your behalf. Can you see? Paul was writing to all the brethren that were in Corinth. Or a writer, let these words remain with you. Let these words, so that you can learn them. You can memorize them. You can back, come back to them constantly and renew your life. Galatians chapter 1, the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul again. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man. 
but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Praise be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Paul was putting it in writing. I'm talking about this passionate man that wanted to save everybody. Be like him. Be like him. To the church in Ephesians. In Ephesus. The church in Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father. To the saints, to the faithful, wherever, wherever you are, may receive grace. Get these words into your heart. Be meditating in these words also and always. Paul, passionate writer. My mouth is the pain of a ready writer. Philippians chapter 1. Paul and Timothy. The servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the, with the bishops and the deacons, all the pastors there. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He was writing to the elders also. Elders should not feel they have known. What have you known? You must be taught so that you can teach well. So, Paul was writing things they need to know. Yes, in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy is our brother, to the saints and faithful, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. For, this, for, the, for the Colossians, the saints in Colossae, Paul has never been there. He just heard from Epaphras concerning them that they were doing well. Yes, he heard. So, it's my responsibility as an apostle of Christ that have been granted grace to know the truth above many, to write unto you to know the, the Christian message to how who is Jesus how to honor Jesus how to serve Jesus so he wrote to them although he didn't know them I see the instruction he gave them in verse 16 uh, verse 15 and 16 he said salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphas and the church which is in his house and when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea, and say to Archippus, Take it to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Paul will write to this church. Now we don't even know the epistle he wrote to the Laodiceans. He has, he has been writing. He had been writing to cause the people to know God, to cause people to know the truth, to have access to the truth. And of course, Satan will make some churches ban people from reading the epistles of Paul. That's their doom, to their doom, damnation, to their doom. Was he also writing to churches? No. He was also writing to individuals. Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my, son, my own son in the faith, grace and mercy be from God our Father. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. He wrote to Timothy as an individual. Timothy, here is a guideline in ministry. Here is my example to follow. You see this man? Be like Paul. Go and be like Paul. He saved the world. 
he preserved the truth to unborn generation the things which i have taught you commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also that it shall roll on from generation to generation yeah paul did not mind what he suffered for christ he was ready to die for the name of the lord jesus and for the gospel service he didn't fear anything as to god don't fear anything ah you won't come into the house again go there god will open the house for you ah i will not pay your school fees go go jesus will pay your school fees who has power to do hard to you except the lord allows it if the lord allows that they remain firm what they said is because he has another alternative don't be afraid at the weight of your father don't be afraid at the weight of your brother don't be afraid at the weight of your uncle don't be afraid at the weight of your husband don't be afraid at, at the weight of anybody your boss in the office the boss we know is jesus the father is their father which is in heaven he is the one that has authority and the lord says do not fear do not worry it shall be well go safely the lord see you through the lord honor his name in your life i said the lord honor his name in your life let every knee bow before the lord as i live said the lord every knee shall bow before me that's what god is saying therefore don't be afraid move and preach don't be afraid don't be afraid you're going to lose your marriage Preaching the word of God is not disobedience. Praying in your house is not disobedience. Reading the Bible is not disobedience. Therefore, it is better to obey God than to obey your husband out of fear and lose eternal life. So, stand bold. Stand bold. Remember the book I gave to evangelists, evangelists today. God's covenant with, with you. Bold holy bold and courageous preacher where, where is that book can you wave it at me wave it you who collected that book but god is making agreement with you holy preacher be bold be courageous it shall be well with your life and you who are here now you are hearing this new gospel it looks like new actually you are hearing this new gospel and you must travel with it it's as if this is the days of pentecost you came from various places and the holy ghost is working in your life the holy ghost is renewing your life the holy ghost is cleansing your life the holy ghost is building knowledge of truth into your life the holy ghost is putting divine courage into your life and you're going to scatter everywhere preach as you go preach as you go preach as you go announce it tell them speak to them about holiness revival movement it's also another message holiness revival movement everybody say holiness revival movement it's not a denomination exactly the lord has raised up this body to revive the churches in truth and many people do not know in fact it's wonderful that horemo hospital can cure cancer everybody say it Horemo Hospital can cure cancer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. A woman came there with breast cancer. It's settled. I told her, I was told of this church. I said, hey, is this thing is true? This machine is working magic. It's God's machine. Everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the stories are many. The stories are many. Therefore, holiness revival movement is vested with the power of the light of the gospel. The power of the truth of the gospel. The knowledge of truth. The word of truth. The wisdom of truth. The grace for truth. God has planted it here for all the world. All the world. And the Holiness Revival Movement has moved to more than 50 countries in the world. And the people are getting it. The people are changing. The people are changing. God is working. God is working. God is working. Go and tell the people. Go, tell them. 
Holiness of Abba Mufta. A minister of Jesus. A minister. Jesus is the Lord here. He's here himself. You're seeing it different. It's righteousness. <laughs> righteousness. The Lord said, Shout! Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. Everybody say, Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness. 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 Say, say everybody. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. That is holiness revival movement. Well, tell the people, the Lord has raised up a body of Christians to make other people real Christians, to make them know God. Take our books to them. Take our messages to them. Show them in the internet how they can have access. Tell them the YouTube. Give them our international Bible study, the Zoom ID. Give it to them. Let them join us every 4.30 Sunday evening. And then you will see the world will change. The world will change. I said the world will change. The power of God will change the world. The power of God will change the world. And this Jesus will come and take people to heaven. And your people will also be there. You will be there. Paul. 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 A zealous man. Yeah, a zealous man. In the book of Acts chapter 21, Acts of Apostles, chapter 21, I read verse 11 to verse 14. The Bible says, Acts 21 verse 11. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's guide and bound his hands, his own hands and feet and said, Thou shalt thou see the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem. Bind the man that honored this guide and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we had these things, both we and they of that place besought him that he besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die as Jerusalem. For the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. Don't fear death. Don't fear suffering. Don't fear non payment of school fees. Don't fear losing your marriage. Don't fear being driven away from your workplace. Don't fear anything. Stand for Jesus. Stand for Jesus. Stand for Jesus. Hey, two of you, two of you, media, yes, come and stand for Jesus here. Let them know how people can stand. Stand upright for Jesus. Yes. Stand upright. Yeah, hold that thing, hold that thing. Hold it up like this. It is the work you're doing for Jesus. Stand, yes, stand for Jesus. Whether they throw stones at you, they abuse you, whatever they do to you, don't change, don't change, don't change, don't change. Stand for Jesus. Stand. Stand for Jesus. That is the life of Paul. Uh, media, actually you are doing your work. You can continue to do your work. You have shown the example now. But I'm telling everybody. Media, you can go to your office now. I say, you have this most example. <laughs> Stand for Jesus. Don't shake. Don't backslide. Don't turn away. Let not your boyfriend turn you away from Jesus. Let not your girlfriend Turn you away from Jesus. Let the corrupt money turn you away from Jesus. Yahoo! You are saved. You are saved. You are born again. You are born again. Don't go back to Yahoo anymore. Say, I will not go back anymore. Yahoo boys only. Yahoo boys only. Say, I will not go back anymore. Glory to God. Give a clap of to God for them. Amen. Yes. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, that is what the Lord is saying. That is what God is saying unto you. 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, from verse 18, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Paul said, let me tell you how I said I am a Christian and I'm a Christian minister. Let me also show you, because many people are 
and testifying glorying and you are praising and thanking and seeing them that they have achieved much but let me tell my own yes for ye suffer fools gladly seeing ye yourselves are wise you know I'm speaking like a fool you are wise people you allow those people to make a boast of carnal achievement well let me make my boast too Although my own will look foolish. But of course, you can, you can permit it. You have learned how to be patient. Yes. For ye suffer. If a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, I speak concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. How be it, wherein soever in his bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Those people boasting themselves among you. Are they Hebrews? So I am. So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above major. In prisons, more often, more frequent in deaths threatened to die often of the jews five times received i 40 stripes I mean stripes save one twice was i beaten with rods once was i stoned twice i suffered shipwreck a night and a day i've been in the deep in journeyings often in perils of water in perils of robbers in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the hidden, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. You see, I want, I'm in danger. They were always looking for how to, to harm me, how to kill me. Here I go, they want to kill me. Here I go, they want to kill me. I'm always, I die daily. And he continued, in weariness. And painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness all for the gospel beside those things that are without that which come upon me daily the care of all the churches they say this church they are fighting there this church they say they don't want their pastor again this church, they say, uh, this is what somebody has committed immorality there and that he's abusing the church. And all is coming to me to solve. I'm always thinking how to change people, how to post people, how to rebuke people, how to correct people, how to excommunicate, how to discipline, how to encourage people, how to enroll people, how to. I am beside the care of all the churches upon me for this gospel. Who is weak? And I am not weak in fellowship with him, in concern, in encouragement to him. Who is offended? And I burn not. Who offended you? Who, what, what happened to you? Where, 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 who, who is asking you not to come to church again? Please, what happened? Who offended? Please, I want to judge the matter. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must miss glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which is blessed forevermore knoweth that I lie not in Damascus the governor under Aretas the king kept the city of the Damascus with a garrison desirous to apprehend me and through a window in a basket was I laid down by the wall and escaped his hands all for the gospel What's suffering then? And you, why are you not trying to suffer? Because your husband slapped you. Why will you not suffer? Because they deny your food. Why don't you want to suffer? Go and be ready to suffer. For unto you it is given, not only to believe the gospel, but to suffer on his behalf. So go. Toughen your skin. This Jesus, you must follow him to the end. You have come, you have come, you are not going back. You have decided to follow Jesus. 
Yeah. Paul mentored many to be effective ministers of the gospel, to work with him, and to succeed him after his departure. He mentored many. Acts of Apostles 16, not 6, 16, verse 1 to verse 5. The Bible says, Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium, whom him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was, was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. Paul was raising up people and mentoring them, training them. He raised up Titus too. Paul and Silas, you saw them in combination. Paul and these, Paul and these, Paul raising up people, keeping them to be in church of churches, mentoring them, answering questions, doing all to ensure the work of God is being done. Paul, 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 Paul. Be like him. Go and walk. Be like him. And now Paul dedicated himself to ceaseless prayer for the church and individual believers. Go to Romans, I'm praying for you. Go to the Corinthians, I am praying for you. Go to the Galatians, I am praying for you. Go to Ephesians, I am praying for you. The Thessalonians, I'm praying for you. Even Timothy, I'm praying for you. Go to Titus, I'm praying. Philemon, oh, I am praying. Hebrews, constant. He is a prayer man, laboring in prayer, that the fruit of service might be preserved. Watching and binding evil spirits against the, the saved ones. Praying that God will resolve the crisis in the churches. God will open door to new ones, and that the old ones will live in peace among themselves. This was Paul's life and ministry. Finally, Apostle Paul finished his course and met it to heaven. He finished. Look at it in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6 to verse 8. 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6 to verse 8. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my, of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul said, now I am going. But I want to tell you three things I did as I arrived at today to go now, to die now. I have fought a good fight. It was not easy. I laid hold on eternal life and fought a good fight. Marriage was to blow me out. Business was to blow me out. Politics was to blow me out. Yes, satanic attack was to destroy my life. I fought. I fought in prayer. I fought in fasting. I fought by generating people to go into prayer. I fought standing on my ground. Never going. Every kind of temptation. Persuasion of men. Persuasion of money. Trade. Coming from the devil. Coming from husband, coming from wife, coming from parents, I stood. I fought a good fight. I laid my hand upon eternal life. I have arrived. Then he said, 
I finished my course. The preaching of the gospel is still there, but the area got marked out for me. I finished. The area, the part of ministry, got marked out for me. I finished it. I have finished my course. I didn't stand on the way. I didn't backslide on the way. I didn't turn off on the way. I finished it fully. In fact, I came to the end. I ran, ran, ran and reached the final mark. I finished. I have finished. The last statement that the, the number three is the greatest of them all. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. I kept the commandments of God. I obeyed the doctrines of holiness. I kept my body undefiled. I never stole. I never told lies. I didn't cheat. I didn't hurt. I didn't play wickedness. I obeyed God. I didn't commit adultery with any man's wife. I kept the faith up to this end. You know, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. You did that in the past. David did it once. He never repeated it. I kept the faith. I kept the faith. I am free. I have no evil conscience. God will not condemn me my conscience is free henceforth from now i am going to collect my crown i'm going now to the almighty god the creator of man the one that called me to the christian ministry i'm going to stand before him and i will bow and collect my crown <laughs> hallelujah may the lord help you may the lord help you be like paul be like paul labor like paul Stand like Paul. So far, don't change. We shall see you again. Rise up upon your feet and commit yourself to God. This Christianity will not end on the way. Hallelujah. It will not end on the way. Satan has no power to end it. Money has no power to end it. Women have no power to end it. Men have no power to end it. Parents have no power to end it. Pastors have no power to end it. You will be a Christian. You have decided you have decided all together let us sing one two go i have decided to follow jesus yes i have decided No turning back, never turning back. I have decided, yes, I have decided, yes, I have decided. No turning back. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. I have decided. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. I say, though no one joins me, still I will follow. I have, I have. Thank you very much. They cross before me.
the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me. I have. Thank you. Beautiful. That is very good. God is preparing another kingdom. God is preparing another kingdom. I have decided. I will be there. Now, seal up your agreement with God. That is what has come to stay. It's sealed up by the blood of Jesus. That covenant is sealed by the blood. Thank you. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my I believe in you, you are the living Savior, I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior.
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. I believe. I believe. 